So here we are with Marat, the former president of the Health and Healing Club of Luxembourg. Uh, Single-handedly, Marat made that club into a huge success and even organized the first organic fair in Luxembourg. Do you remember? Oh, I do. <laughs> but that was a lot of fun, Sultana. Indeed. I, I'm, I, just very quickly, just to, to chat about it, we, we decided we would do one because no one had never been uh, arranged ever in Luxembourg. And what was marvelous is the amount of people that came forward to help because of course we didn't have a budget or any fund like that to set mm -hmm. this up and we went around to you know various therapists and speakers and uh, those who had you know uh, had started up with the organic uh, produce mm -hmm. and everybody came forward and everybody helped it was a great weekend a really great weekend okay uh, so we are going to take a step further back into time and ask Marit how did you get interested in health and healing oh uh, let's see um, well I have a very an unusual memory when I was about six or seven mm -hmm. and uh, we lived out in the countryside and I remember we all got in the car. So this was in Ireland? Was this it? was back in Ireland. Okay. Back in Ireland. We got in the car, my dad was driving, my mum was in front and my two brothers were on either side of me and all of a sudden it just came to me and I said to my brothers, I turned to them and I said I know what will make people well uh, and, and they'd no longer be sick. And so my brothers teased me and they said, uh, well, if you do tell us. And I said, I, I can't tell you. I have to wait till I grow up. <laughs> no, it's a secret. But the funny thing right. was, I still remember yeah. it to this day, because as I looked out on nature, I felt everything that's in nature, you know, in relation to plants and, and spices and herbs, mm -hmm. had all healing properties. Indeed. And how old were you at that time? I was about six or seven. Six or seven, so already uh, an interest in plants and herbs and healing. But I never did another thing about that. Mm -hmm. Nothing again mm -hmm. until I came to Luxembourg. Okay. And then I went to one of the first talks of health that was organized here and it was homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And the minute I sat down and listened to that talk, mm -hmm. that came back to me. It, it flooded through me and I thought, oh, what is Because homeopathy, as mm -hmm. you know, is made from plants and essences. Uh, so, Merit, so you have been living in Luxembourg for a long time, but you travel a lot. You go back often to Ireland. We're, you, we're very lucky because we still have our family there, brothers and sisters. I have a brother and sister here too in mm -hmm. Luxembourg. So we're, we're very fortunate that we have family on both sides okay. of the sea. Indeed. So I think you have a broad view of, of, of living in, in different countries mm -hmm. and traveling in many countries too. So my next question is, so what sort of alternative therapies are you interested in? Because you have this broad view. Well, what I did uh, when I decided after working in the corporate world for so long, I stepped out of it and I went back to college and I'm, I'm now studying nutrition. I qualified as a nutritional health coach. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And where from? And so I'm from the Irish Institute of Nutrition and Health. In Dublin. What courage to keep on <laughs> studying <laughs> when you no longer have to study. <laughs> oh, but it was such a pleasure. It was really, re a lot of work. I yeah. definitely admit that. And intense, it was very intense. But you, you can learn so much. And, and I mean, the whole idea is maybe to be able to pass this on. But yeah. um, so, but my interest in alternative therapies are the ones that are successful, that they produce a, a result. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's coming along with a special illness or a, a complaint, um, th that they can find the result. Like we're all different. Mm -hmm. So maybe, like for example, we talked about homeopathy. You know, I find that very effective personally, mm -hmm. and yeah. it also works very well in our family. But mm -hmm. maybe it doesn't work for everybody. But people True. have to try it. Yeah, have to try they it have out. to try it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that one of the most amazing things I learned when we were studying is that at least 95% of our illnesses today, of diseases, are actually man-made. There's only that small percent is really either is something genetic or, or contagious, mm -hmm. but everything else is man-made. That's think. very important information. Something to think about. So if mm -hmm. if, we're, if we really step back and look what we're putting into our bodies, we probably could turn our health around. Mm -hmm. I mean, a very famous doctor once said, human beings don't die, they, they kill themselves. Oh gosh. So if we really also reflect on this, mm -hmm. then that might have, we can have a, we can, we're able to live longer and better and healthier. We just need to know how. Can you perhaps give us a very short or 
small example of what we could do better in our daily lives yeah. in terms well, of nutrition? If you just say one, let's say just, just we start with, if everybody just starts with maybe one small step, mm -hmm. probably the biggest thing is actually look at what you're putting into your shopping trolley. And the, I was, it was wonderful because the other day I was just listening to an interview and uh, a health professional, she had bought a margarine mm. tub and 15 years on, the margarine is not moldy, it hasn't gone uh, stale. 15 it's a, years on. 15 years on, it's exactly <laughs> as it was when she bought it. So she was trying to let us know that you put that substance into your body, think of all the harm it's doing, because it just, it, the body's not able to deal with it, it doesn't recognize it. Cannot it. digest it, cannot. Can, I can't uh, get rid of it. Oh, I see. I can't get rid of it. Okay, so that's a very important message for some people, I imagine. It's just one simple thing, mm -hmm. and then look at the, all the products that mm -hmm. are related to that. All the products that are um, that are made from it, and the other probably in your second step mm -hmm. is sugar. J just really look at the labels, read the labels, mm -hmm. and see the quantity of sugar that. So that's what's in the it. problem with sugar, Marit? <laughs> <laughs> excess. It's the excess. I. I'm so what does sugar do to our bodies? <laughs> well, right now, and I know you can see it's worldwide. Um, is how the rate of obesity and type two diabetes gone up so as more uh, processed food have entered uh, the food chain then so is diabetes and uh, obesity also uh, um, rising and uh, the, the most important thing the, your body will talk to you you know your body will let you know it's not indeed, feeling well indeed, indeed. and if you could just listen to the signs and just be aware of what have you put into it to maybe to make this happen so if somebody wanted to give up sugar what could be their alternatives mm. if there are any I don't know well, I've got to be the first one to say I do have a sweet tooth. <laughs> Always had a so sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's it, it's really more like mind over matter because I love mm -hmm. the fact when we uh, when on our studies is that your body has now got used to that. So mm -hmm. if you if you are used to having uh, lots of sugary things mm -hmm. during the day and it's not having it, you have to come to a point where you slowly stabilize it. So one of the best ways to stabilize it is to if you say you could have an apple. Mm -hmm. and uh, pair it with nut butter. Okay, okay. Nut and butter. Nut. So you're getting your sweet, but you're getting a very good strong protein that'll help me to create that sugar balance. Mm. So it's little like, it's small, small blocks. It's building on what you're putting into your body so that maybe over time, you will be able to reduce your sugar cravings. So that's really a very useful and practical information you're giving us, mm -hmm. uh, how to do it in small steps, one step at a time. Uh, but however, if we go back to an overview of alternative therapies, mm -hmm. are there in particular that you find interesting? You already mentioned homeopathy. I did. Mm -hmm. I'd say, um, there, if you look back maybe uh, thousands of years of a medicine that was already there, um, in, re uh, in relation to Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, um, and they're really treating the body naturally. They're not immediately trying to find a quick fix. They're not producing, uh, you know, drugs uh, just to maybe suppress the problem. Mm -hmm. They're actually going very deep and saying, well, what caused that problem in the first place? Um, so but we're all individuals. We're mm -hmm. all so different. And we That's each important to remember. Very yeah. important. And so mm -hmm. we'll each react differently to a treatment. So the whole idea is maybe to find the type of treatment that works for you. So uh, if, let's say, I was somebody who was just starting out, uh, getting interested in alternative therapy, uh, what sort of step would I need to take, or steps would I need to take? Well, first maybe you could first ask yourself, what um, do you want to improve? Is there, have you a specific condition? Uh, or are you on, on, already on medication? Um, what's the outcome you're looking for? Or are you just, are you well and healthy and you, and you just like to stay better? Mm -hmm. And have a good, long, healthy life? Okay. Uh, Let's take the latter case. So that you're um, you're healthy and well, and you just yes. want to maintain your health. So, mm. I, so I would definitely say, just like the way we we're asked to maybe have a routine checkup once a year, mm -hmm. then you find the therapy that you find that is going to enhance that for you. So it could be even maybe having a chiropractic session, okay. or it, it could be even having uh, a detox. Think about a cleanse. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you think that anybody was a car, then make sure it gets mm -hmm. serviced yearly. Uh, same thing for our bodies. Our bodies also need a service. Um, uh, and there are so many, um, if you even look back on religions, all religions would have had fasting. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so there is a whole reason behind that. Mm -hmm. 
So by, by doing uh, even intermittent fasting, which would mean say, say your last meal at seven or eight at night, that you would not eat till maybe seven or eight the next morning, that's intermittent fasting. And that's giving you a whole digestive so system. So that should be done how many times a week? Well, um, <laughs> if, 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 if you think about it, we all know it's not great to have big meals just before you go to bed at night. And it's definitely not the best idea to have bigger meals throughout the day. I think the, the one of the, the lovely advice is eat like a king at breakfast, maybe like a, a prince at lunchtime and a pauper in the evening. So you're Indeed. not putting nothing heavy into your... Into still valid, yes, still, still valid. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, if I was interested in homeopathy or color therapy or aroma therapy, or for example, if I wanted to find a chiropractor or an osteopath, uh, what what were the first steps that I could take? Do I search on the internet first? Well, there's, I would be, I'm sh absolutely, you can pr say wherever you're living, have a search to see who's in your locality. Mm -hmm. uh, then decide to find out how good they are. Try to find out from other people maybe who have been okay. and follow the results. Okay. And if it really fits in with your lifestyle, then I say, Get, definitely have a session to see how well do you feel after. Okay, and how important is it to feel comfortable with this alternative oh, therapy practitioner? That, that's very important because, mm -hmm. all, you see, if you're going for a session to a practitioner, you want to make sure that they understand you and, and that you feel very comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I, I think the process of the giving and receiving won't be as beneficial. And how useful is it to do some research on the therapy you're going to try out beforehand? Very important, because you want to make sure it's the one that suits you. Mm -hmm. Because like, first you decide what are you going for, unless you're just going to understand and maybe explore, uh, to, to know a bit about it. But if you're really going specifically for your own health, you want to know what are they going to be doing in relation to that. But you could always maybe go along for a consultation just to understand without necessarily having uh, session but you just let the practitioner know you, you've come because you'd like to have more information. Okay well uh, thank you very much Meret for all these wonderful tips and certainly keep us posted with all your developments in nutritional therapy. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me so far. My pleasure.